In this section, we're going to talk about how you find asymptotes. We're going to talk about finding vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So first, let's just remember what an asymptote is. If I look at a graph, we usually denote it by a dotted line. And it means a place where the graph gets infinitely close to a certain value, but it never reaches it. And this is going to be particularly important when we're thinking about finding vertical asymptotes. It's important that with vertical asymptotes, the graph never touches a vertical asymptote. Okay? And the reason why is because vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator, or the bottom, of the fraction is equal to zero. We know that we can never divide by zero, so we can't have zero in the denominator of our, of our fraction. So whenever we see the denominator of a rational function turning into zero, that's when we're getting vertical asymptotes. So if I want to use an equation and identify a vertical asymptote from the equation, all I do is look at the denominator, whatever that is, and I set it equal to zero. Whatever x value makes that denominator zero, that's going to be what a vertical asymptote is. So x equals three is one of the vertical asymptotes in this first, is the vertical asymptote in this first example. And number two, I have these two factors on the bottom. So I'm going to set both of them equal to zero individually. And as I solve them, I'll get x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. So I have two vertical asymptotes in this rational function. Now with 3 and 4, if you look at the denominators here, as we set them equal to 0, it's a little bit more complicated to solve for them because they're not in factored form. So we're going to start by factoring them. So in number 3, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 3. And those two numbers can be 3 and negative 2. Sorry, I meant add up to 1. I don't know why I said 3. Once it's factored, then I can just set each factor equal to 0. Oops. So I have x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 2. And those are my two factors, or my two vertical asymptotes in that third rational function. I'm going to do the same thing with number 4. I'm going to start by factoring it. I notice that x squared minus 16 is a difference of squares, so it's going to factor into x minus 4 times x plus 4. Then I'll set each of those factors equal to 0. So I have two vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 4 and x equals 4. Okay. So usually finding the vertical asymptotes is fairly straightforward. Then once you know them, you can go ahead and you can sketch them on your graph and you can make some good progress. Um, towards figuring out what your graph is going to look like. Now jumping into horizontal asymptotes, this is when things get a little bit trickier as far as determining what the horizontal asymptote is. So the horizontal asymptote roughly tells you what's going to happen as x gets really, 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 really big or really, 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 really small. So what we're really doing is we're just kind of looking at the end behavior. So what happens on the far left and right side of a graph? So to kind of get an idea for what that is, we're going to use this example, f of x equals x plus 2 over x squared plus 1. And over here I have a table of values for us to look at. So in my x values, let's first just look at these first few. I have these really, really big negative numbers, or really small numbers. Negative 100,000, negative 10,000, negative 1,000. And then on the right side of my graph, I have what the function evaluates to when I plug those in. So when I plug in negative 100,000, I get... 0 0.000000099, right? Now, if you look at these values, I want to kind of look at the trend of what happens as x keeps getting smaller and smaller. So as x keeps getting kind of ridiculously small, do you see how these y values are getting very, very close to zero? They're still negative, but it's this teeny tiny little decimal. So it's getting really, really close to zero. So as my x's are getting really smaller, going to negative infinity, my y's are getting closer and closer to zero. Let's look what happens on the bottom half of the chart. If you look here, my x values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Here, my x values are getting closer and closer to positive infinity. And if you look at my y values over here, I'm getting these decimals that are getting closer and closer to zero again. They're positive, but they're just barely positive. So they're just barely bigger than zero. So this tells me that on both ends of my graph, 
my function is going to zero. So the y value that our graph is approaching is zero, which means that the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So as we think about the ends of this graph, we're going to have this asymptote, and you can see it in the graph right here, that the function, the blue function, keeps getting closer and closer to zero and not touching it. Okay. Let's look at a generalized form of this. Um, an important part of understanding the function that we just looked at is looking at the degree of the denominator and the degree of the numerator. So if you look at the if you look at this equation right here, remember the degree is the biggest exponent. The degree of the top is one. The degree of the bottom is two. So whenever the degree of the denominator or the bottom is bigger, the horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals zero, no matter what. The reason why is because whenever the degree on the bottom is bigger, it means that the bottom of the fraction is growing so much faster than the top of the fraction that even though the top of the fraction keeps getting bigger, the bottom is just getting massive. So think about like dividing by a bigger and bigger number. The bigger number you divide by, the smaller the fraction is going to get. The closer that fraction is going to get to zero. Okay. So whenever the degree on the bottom is bigger than the degree on the top, your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So let's look at the other cases. So what happens, for example, if the degree on the top and the bottom are the same, right? Like in this example, in number six, I have 2x squared minus 11 over x squared plus 9. Notice that here, the degree on the top and the bottom is 2, because those biggest exponents are 2. <clears throat> so then what we're going to look at is we're going to look and try to figure out what, what happens to my function, OK? And one thing that you can do is you can plug in really big x values. And um, if you have a calculator, I want you to press pause and go ahead and plug those values into your x's and figure out what you get. Now, if you did that, then you'll notice that these y values are getting really close to a number. And that number is 2. They're approaching 2. So as x gets larger, our graph is approaching 2 which means that our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 2. Okay. So let's look back at our original function, this one up here. I'm going to outline it in red for us. And look at where we're seeing a 2 show up. There's a 2 in front of the x squared in the numerator. That's actually where our horizontal asymptote is coming from. So whenever the degree of the numerator and the denominator is the same, like in this function we're dealing with, then the horizontal asymptote is the numerator's leading coefficient over the denominator's leading coefficient. So remember that the leading coefficient is the number in front of that biggest power of x. So really in this case we would be saying the, the leading coefficient of the top is 2, because it's 2x squared, and the bottom is 1, because it's 1x squared. 2 over 1 is just the same as 2. Okay, So this is how we're going to get these horizontal asymptotes that aren't at 0. This could, say one of the leading coefficients is negative, this could mean that our, that our horizontal asymptote is a negative number. It could mean it's a fraction, it could mean it's a decimal, it could mean it's a whole number. All we know is it's not e going to equal 0. And then we have the third case. What happens if the degree in the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator? Like, look at this one, negative 3x squared plus 2 over x minus 1. Whenever the degree on the top is bigger, there's no horizontal asymptote, okay? There's what we call an oblique or a slant asymptote, which we are not going to worry about. You know why? Because the way you figure those out is using long division. And that ends up being more work than it's actually worth, so we're not going to deal with that. So just know, what I, what I care about you knowing is that when the degree on the top is bigger, you can say there is no horizontal asymptote there. And the reason why that's the case is because when the degree on the top is bigger, the top of the fraction is growing so much bigger than the bottom that it's going to force that function to go to infinity or negative infinity on both sides of your graph. So there's just no number that fraction is going to be approaching. Okay, let's just go through a summary really fast. So if the degree of the numerator is greater The degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. Oh, whoops, I did that backwards. I hope you didn't write that down. If the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, 
then the asymptote is y equals 0. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, so if they're the same, then the asymptote is the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. And then our third case, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, then there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's look at some examples of this. So as we're looking to find the horizontal asymptote, remember all we need to look at is the degrees and then maybe the leading coefficients. So with eight, let's figure out what the degree of the top and the bottom is. The degree of the top is just one, it's the degree, of, it's the biggest exponent, the degree of the bottom is also one. So whenever the degrees are equal, we do the leading coefficient of the top, which is one, over the leading coefficient of the bottom, which is that negative two. So y equals negative one over two is your horizontal asymptote. Okay, let's do the same thing with the next one. Degree of the top is equal to two, Degree of the bottom is equal to 2. They're equal, so I do the leading coefficients of the, the leading coefficient of the top, which is 1, over the leading coefficient of the bottom, which is just 1, because these x squareds just have a 1 in front of them. So my horizontal asymptote is just y equals 1. Okay. Let's look at number 10. The degree of the top here is going to equal 1, because that's the biggest exponent on the top. The degree of the bottom. It's going to equal 2. So whenever the degree of the denominator is bigger, my horizontal asymptote is equal to 0. Okay, number 11. The degree of the top is equal to 3. The degree of the bottom is equal to 2, which means there's no horizontal asymptote. I'm going to let you guys work out the next couple. I will give you a hint on number 12. There's no x's on the top of the numerator here. The degree in the numerator is 0. Okay. I will post all the answers to the rest of these so you can check them on camera.